full-blown acceleration here with the power wagon. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over a 2020 Ram 2500 Power Wagon. And in today's video, we're gonna answer the question of whether you should get this or the new Ram TRX. But first and foremost, a huge shout out and thank you to the Larry H. Miller Dodge Ram Jeep Chrysler here in Sandy for giving me some time with this Power Wagon. Check out their inventory on the link below. Let's get straight into the video. Now under the hood of the Power Wagon, we have a Nachi aspirated 6.4 liter Hemi V8 that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Power outputs are 410 horsepower and then 429 pound feet of torque. Let's go over the front end of the Ram Power Wagon. So first off, notice that you've got the cab lights there at the top that come with the Power Wagon package to help out with people seeing you on the off-road at night. And it also looks pretty cool. And then coming down below that, you guys can see with the hood here, you actually do get some graphics here that you can get as an option. Hopefully that's coming through onto the camera. And then we do get full LED lights with the Power Wagon. You got the fog lights down below with the parking sensors, the tow hooks. And then the Power Wagon does come with a winch from the factory. And hopefully you guys can see that through there with the synthetic cable, a lot safer than the old steel cable you could get with the Power Wagon. But yeah, there is the front end. Now coming around the side of the Power Wagon, we've got 17 inch wheels and wrapped around that, we've got 285 millimeter tires. They are 33s that come stock with the Power Wagon in the front and in the rear. Now you can pretty easily fit 35s on this, just kind of like a pro tip with that. And obviously there's a ton of space to uh, fill up there. And then you guys can see you get the off-road shocks here with the Power Wagon. And it does have about a two inch lift from the factory. And that's why it sits so much higher compared to a standard heavy duty. And then you guys can see you've got the 2500 badge right there. You've got the 6.4 Hemi badge as well. And then you've got the blacked out side steps, not the off-road side steps, you get in the half ton, but still cool nonetheless. And then you got the Power Wagon logo right there. We'll get into the Ram boxes in a little bit, but there is your full side view. into the bed of the power wagon so first off this one has a liner from the factory definitely a nice little touch and this is a little gate that actually comes with the ram boxes so you can like use it to extend the bed well ram doesn't say that but you can use this to extend the uh, bed and gotta put that in quotations anyways you've got led bed lights right here and then you've got little sliders there at the top but yeah that's kind of like the bed space payload capacity is about 1200 pounds and then coming over to the side with the ram boxes themselves you do get a key so you can lock and unlock it but they also lock and unlock with the regular trucks so like if you lock the truck it locks the boxes you do get a full power outlet in here and then you guys can see the storage space in it um, I think it's pretty cool like if you do fishing and all that kind of stuff this is like super awesome because then you can have like compartments for all your fishing gear or whatever but obviously it does make the bed a little bit more narrow um, so it makes it harder to fit like a four-wheeler or something like that in the bed so it's just kind of like a give and take Let's go over the rest of the rear of the Power Wagon. So first off, you've got these full LED lights here, and then you've got your Power Wagon logo there at the bottom. Well, it's kind of hard to see because it's so dark. And then you've got the parking sensors down below. Towing capacity is a little bit under 10,000 pounds with the Power Wagon. And then we do have the little kick step right here. So you guys can see that's a nice little touch. And then when you're done with it, just kick it back in. But yeah, other than that, that's the back of the Power Wagon. Now here's the door panel on the back of the power wagon. So first off, you've got kind of like the gray leather trim here with the black dot trim, and then you've got the soft padding. We're gonna rest your arms with all the stitching, and then silver door handle. Coming to the seats, they're kind of like a mix. So you've got the soft touch on this portion, then you got cloth there in the center, which kind of looks like a uh, mud almost with the kind of design. I think it's pretty neat. And then there is storage underneath the seat, and then you can fold that out. Um, basically, have a flat loading floor. And then underneath here, if it uh, will pop up, there you go. Got the ice buckets in it. But let's actually pop in. So the side steps help out quite a bit. Stepping in, it is pretty high off the ground. If you're wondering, I'm 5'11, fitting here pretty well. You can see my leg room. And then you guys can see you've got some vents and everything down there. And then this pulls down to be some more cup holders. Now here's the door panel at the front. So again, you guys can see you've got the soft touch here with the stitching and then you've got like the gray leather up above with the black touch trim, all of your window controls. And then you've got your mirror adjustments right there. And this does have the smaller mirrors. And then here are the seats at the front. So again, all the soft touch all over the seats, got the Power Wagon logo right there. And then you've got like the cloth trim here in the center portion. And then the adjustments are on the side of the seat. 
And then there is the pedal layout and what that looks like. Light controls over here, so you've got your fog light and then your cargo light. And then you've got the pedal adjustment on the side of the steering wheel. And then you've got the steering wheel adjustment, which is manual. And there's one more look before we pop in. Now here's the steering wheel in the power wagon. So you've got soft touch leather at the top and at the bottom. Then you've got perforated leather here on the side. We're actually gonna grab onto the steering wheel so it helps you get a little bit of a better grip. Got a cruise control down below with your gear selector. And then you got our voice command control over here with your phone controls. And then you got do have the controls there for the center stack. And then radio controls on the back of the steering wheel. And then over here, you've got little stock there for the turn signal slash windshield wiper stock. And that's all for the steering wheel. Now here are the gauges in the power wagon. So you guys can see the RPM gauges there on the left side and the right side, you've got the speed gauge. And then you do have the digital readout in the center, which you can scroll through a couple different screens, like your vehicle information, your fuel economy, trip information, all that kind of stuff. Nothing too crazy. I mean, this is pretty much on all of the new Rams. And the cool thing is it says power wagon there at the top. Now here's the center infotainment system in the power wagon. First off, we'll go over the camera aspect of it. So traditional backup camera and you can zoom in onto the receiver hitch. If you're hooking up to a trailer, the lines do turn with the steering wheel. As for the rest of the basically infotainment system, you can see that we've got heated seats and a heated steering wheel. Response time on it is really good. You press the buttons and it pretty much happens instantaneously. And then you do have navigation with this, which is another nice little touch. But yeah, I definitely like the look of it. And you guys know I like this 8.4 inch because you've got controls down below. Speaking of those controls down below, you can see you've got a couple controls for the volume and the tuner switch. And then you guys can see we've got all these controls for the heated seats, heated steering wheel. And then we've got our controls for the climate system. And then your parking sensors are right down here, your tow haul mode, stability control. And then we've got our trailer brake controls. And then the power wagon does come with the dial shifter since it has that eight speed automatic. They just hook it up with the little dial shifter. And then you guys can see you've got the front and rear lockers that come with the power wagon. And then you can just basically you press the axle lock button and then you decide what you want to do on that side of things. And then you've got the hill descent control and then you've got the sway bar disconnect. So pretty much just like a Jeep Wrangler, but like a giant truck version of a Jeep Wrangler. Not a Gladiator, but the power wagon. Got a bunch of stuff happening here. So this one has the bench seat. You guys can see you've got some storage underneath there with the coin holder, cup holders right here. Turns into a seat. You guys have seen that a million times. And then some more storage just underneath. And then you've got the shifter here on the floor for the power wagon. So you've got your four wheel high, your two wheel high, you've ne your neutral and your four wheel low. And then you've got all those little areas where you can charge devices with the USBs. And then there's some more storage in that area. And then you do have a full power outlet down there. And then finishing things off over here, you've got the glove box, it says power wagon on the front. There's nice stitching on the top of the dash. And then just underneath, you've got some more storage as well. So yeah, tons of uh, cool stuff happening there. Up top here, we do have a power sliding window which uh, is pretty neat. Universal garage door openers, and then you do have the little light controls right there, and then just a traditional mirror, and then it is a darker colored headliner. Well, we actually have the window sticker here for this power wagon, so you guys can see the base price right there. And then feel free to freeze a frame on any portion of this. If you guys are gonna read the whole option list, I'm not gonna go over all of it. And then you guys can see all the standard equipment. And then here's all the optional equipment. Again, feel free to Read through all of that if you want. And then you guys can see the total price, $61,605, which the base price of a TRX without any options is about 69, almost $70,000. After destination, it's $70,000. So just kind of take that into account. And well, let's take this power wagon out and see how it drives. Let's talk about visibility before we set off here in the power wagon. So first off, if you're not used to driving a truck, the visibility over the hood's gonna be a little bit difficult, but if you're used to driving a truck, pretty normal. And then the visibility through the mirrors is okay. I would have preferred the trailer mirrors, but these aren't bad by any means. And then all throughout the back is really good. I mean, trucks are really good. And the fact this is so high off the ground definitely helps out the visibility as well. And let's set off. Well, we are setting off and the second that I pressed the throttle, I got the fuel light. <laughs> I mean, that, that's just like an expectation for these car reviews now is we always got to have the fuel light on. Um, but anyways, initially setting off, this truck feels like really substantial and you just feel bigger than everyone around you. It's just so high off the ground. Definitely a unique feel to it. Um, but it's actually pretty easy to drive. Like it, it has this big substantial feel, but it's not, uh, it's not overwhelming by any means. Like I, I don't feel like the truck's too big or like I can't control it. Um, now in an off-road situation, since I've done a ton of off-roading with my Raptor, 
my Raptor is a little bit smaller than this truck. Um, maybe a little bit wider, but like in terms of like the overall length, a little bit smaller. I, I kind of understand what it feels like to have a big truck in certain circumstances, and that's where the power wagon's a little bit uh, confusing, but we'll talk about that later. So first off, from a ride quality perspective, I mean, on road, it's relatively smooth. It's not as smooth as like a traditional 2500 or like the new Ram 1500s. It's a little bit rougher than that, but it's still really smooth. Um, and then in terms of the noise that comes through, you actually pretty much don't hear any tire noise. Wind noise is pretty minimal, so it's good on that. You do hear some nice sounds from that 6.4 Hemi. Does it sound as good as the TRX? No, but does it sound good? Yes, it definitely sounds good. And the other thing to consider with this is uh, the steering's super vague. It's, I mean, I kind of expect that with how high this is off the ground, but yeah, definitely like, I mean, hopefully you guys are seeing like how much hand movement I am having just on a regular basis with this truck, like very vague steering, but let's get our minor acceleration. I love the sound of the 6.4 Hemi. Just has this nice, like just throaty, just massive sound. It's just a really good sound. Uh, brakes are really good on this truck too, which I mean, if you're off-roading at a higher speed, you definitely want to have really good uh, braking power with your vehicle, and this definitely doesn't disappoint. But we're gonna get our full-blown acceleration here with the power wagon. Yeah, so it's pretty good from an acceleration standpoint. Um, it actually feels about the same speed um, as like a Ram 1500, maybe a little bit slower. So if you get like a 1500 with the 5.7 Hemi, this feels just slightly slower than that. And that'll get me into selling things up with the Power Wagon and then kind of doing my comparison against the TRX. So first off, yes, this is a lot less money than a TRX, but you know, different trucks, right? The TRX is like your high speed off-road truck that does everything pretty well. Like it drives really nice on the road and it's really fast off-road, but you can also do some crawling with it. And like it does everything good. Whereas this is a little bit more capable in the off-road from a crawling perspective because of the um, double lockers in the front and the rear. And then also because of the sway bar disconnect. So you're gonna be able to get a little bit more out of it. And also the tire setup is better for that because you have so much more um, room in the wheel wells and everything. So overall, this would be kind of like a better off-road truck in certain circumstances, but as an all-around truck, the TRX is pretty much the better truck. The towing capacity between the, both the trucks is pretty similar. The payload is similar, um, but you just get a lot more with that truck. I think the Power Wagon's still great. I just think that now that the TRX is out, I think there's gonna be a lot less people buying this truck. It's still like, this truck was already, you know, pretty low production numbers, but I think it's gonna be even lower now because everyone that's already spending sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000, they're probably gonna, you know, bump up a little bit more to get a TRX rather than uh, going for the Power Wagon. Well, time will tell, but that's kind of my uh, guess with this truck. I still think it's a great truck um, if you want like a really solid off-roading heavy-duty truck But before you buy this I would go and look at like a Wrangler or a Gladiator and then I'd go look at the TRX and then kind of see if one of those fit your needs better because I, This this is just a weird vehicle. I think it's awesome But it's also kind of strange now that's gonna sum things up for our video on this 2020 Ram 2500 power wagon and again a huge shout out and thank you to the Larry H. Miller Dodge Ram Jeep Chrysler here in Sandy, Utah for giving me some time with this power wagon. Check out their inventory in the link below. I'll see all of you in the next video.